Hello, it's Mark here from Lightmap, and we're going to light this watch front view with Cinema 4D and V-Ray and HDR Light Studio. So the kind of look we're going to go for is something a bit like this, where we've got, um, it looks like two large panels reflecting in the front, and there's a graduation of lights going around and up, and the same at the bottom, there's this black line where those panels aren't meeting. A bit of a highlight here that's then creating a highlight on the strap, and the same thing at the top. So that's the kind of look, and again, similar uh, kind of look there on another example. So in Cinema 4D, we've got the HDR Light Studio connection panel open. We've made uh, a HDR Light Studio project, and we're going to start HDR Light Studio. OK, and then we'll just drag the connection panel over here so we can see it. And then HDR Light Studio over here. We'll, uh, the interface layout we've gone for is the render view, canvas, light list. I've tabbed up the presets, light properties, light looks, and render view settings here. And then this gets everything we want on this side of the screen. And then we can see uh, the render in V-Ray that will start shortly. Um, so if we go to V-Ray and start interactive render, there we go. We can now see the front view of the watch. And I'll just bring this panel down here just in case we need it uh, shortly. So let's go to HDR Light Studio. Great. And we're going to load the model of the watch into the render view so we can do light painting because uh, we don't support having this render view inside HDR Light Studio at the moment. And you can't have this uh, render in the viewport that I can see. So we'll use the live V-Ray frame buffer here. Press play here. Bring in the model. Change the camera to the front view. And on the render settings, we'll just change the height to 400 as well. Back to the light properties. Okay, so the first thing I want to do actually is let's go and get a big old softbox and uh, drag that onto the shots up here. And then we'll move the handle to the bottom of the light, position it around here on the watch, scale that right up make it quite bright and then actually we'll type in we'll, we'll make this as big as possible so a thousand by a thousand so we've got an absolutely huge light there and if we look in the render view here we can see there's an issue in that this light is huge but the light is not wrapping around the bezel like we saw in the reference image so to just see where we'd need to get the light to go to do that if I make a round light and click on this bezel and then duplicate that and click on this bezel over here you can see we'd have to get the light to stretch to that extent and the light is already absolutely maxed out in terms of its size it's absolutely it's absolutely huge so in order to get this lighting effect on the watch we can actually do this just using the gradient background and playing with the gradient so we'll delete those lights and then we'll open up the graph for this gradient background and then we can start uh, designing the lighting just using the gradient. So we can double click to add points. So we'll start with this bright one here, double click down to fully black, double click fully black, double click. And then the next thing I'm going to do is turn on this log button. So this uh, ramp is linear and is being displayed as linear and when this ramp is used on the HDRI map this whole view is has a view LUT on it so it looks correct uh, but what it means is that all the values at the darker values are being pulled up so what you do on this ramp isn't necessarily what is coming through and what you can see so if we turn log on that will um, put a logarithmic uh, scale against the values which kind of is like a reverse sRGB so it basically means put simply now 
what you are doing on this ramp is much more accurate to what you'll see in the view. It makes it far more controllable. So when I'm working on the graph, generally I'll turn the log on and it gives me a lot more control. So if I turn that off, you can see how this fall off here isn't really happening as I would expect, but if I turn it on, we do now get this, this visual fall off that you'd expect from that. So let's just add some more points on this ramp and play with it until we get the kind of look that we want. I think already I can see that we need to make this a bit brighter. Now before I do any more editing on this, what I'm going to do is put a light behind the watch to act as a background. So in my presets here, let's just double click and it just corresponds that that light is behind the watch. If I solo that, we can see that. And let's position it perfectly by changing the modes to rim, clicking in the middle of the watch, and we can see it's just moved it up slightly. Might scale it up a little bit. Great, so that's our background for the watch. And then we can judge our gradients now better against this whitish background. Let's just turn the brightness up slightly on this so it is a bit of a purer white. Okay, so I think there's room to make this a little bit brighter, this ramp. Okay, so that's nicely, that's virtually white now in the reflection. So if I just drop that down, say to 250, and we'll do the other adjustments in the ramp. So I'll open up the uh, graph for this ramp again. We're going to change the interpolation to Bezier because that does a smoother graduation between the points. point there so I like what's happening here this is graduating off really nicely I think we could just come up with being slightly brighter here and a bit more of a fall off there And I think that gap is a little bit too big. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's just okay that. And then we want to put a light. I think actually the brightness at the bottom and here. Um, no, that looks okay. That looks okay. Let's Let's put a light at the top and the bottom here now. So we'll make a soft round light from the toolbar and then we'll click on the bottom of the strap here in the render view. And we'll change the uh, light paint mode to reflection to do that. And then we'll scale that up, make it a bit brighter. And actually let's go to the alpha ramp there and turn on log so that we change the fall off on that so it's a bit brighter in the middle if I just show you the difference the before and after turn it off and it's kind of more uh, the way it is falling off it's kind of stays brighter for longer if I put that log on we now get a fall off that looks more like what you see on the graph here so let's leave that like that scale it up a little bit more turn the brightness down a little bit perhaps move it a little bit further up the strap okay that looks good let's duplicate that light and do it at the top here as well and we 
we'll make that a little bit brighter. And you can see that is being picked up also on this bezel. I might actually try clicking on the bezel itself. We can zoom in a little bit to do that in this view. Use light paint, just click on the bezel. That looks nice. I think I'll move the lower one in that way as well. So we'll just drag that up. I'm going to change this render view. I'm going to make the material more metallic. By changing the index of refraction to be higher to 5, I made the diffuse color black. And I'm going to take the reflectivity up to 100%. And then with this light selected here, we use light paint to just click on that bezel there. Okay, so I like the look of that. I'm finding that I can see this horizontal line of the lighting going through the face of the watch and I don't want that. So what we can do is create a round light to kind of reflect in the face. And we can then make that mask what's going on behind. So if I make a, a round light, and if we click in the middle of the watch face, and then in the light properties for the light, let's make the blend mode over. Let's make the brightness zero. And on the alpha ramp, take this value up higher. We've now got this solid black light that's reflecting in the front. Now it's hard to see the extent of that, so what I'm actually going to do is colour this light red and then make its brightness back to 100 and solo it. And then we can more clearly see, if I scale this right down, we can kind of see where that is reflecting in the watch and make sure that we don't make it too big and have too big an impact in the reflections. So I think that looks fine in terms of, yeah, that, that size is fine. So if we make that brightness zero, it doesn't matter the color because if it's zero brightness, it'll be black. We'll unsolo that. And then you can see here, if I turn that light off, you can see that the face is washed out with this line through it. If I turn it back on, the face is now darker. Uh, but, and we've removed that line. So now we can place a light to bring this face alive a bit. And I'll go to the presets and I'll get one of these tracing paper lights, let's say uh, this one. And we'll fit a render to the view and I will drag and drop that onto here. And then we can just scale that down a bit. Scale it down a bit more and then get a bit of brightness going in there and we'll solo this light so we can see the effect that this light is having on the face of the watch now I quite like that I'll take it up there a bit more I quite like that it's bringing the hands alive, it's bringing some shadow in here. Um, some of the face now, the numbers are a bit darker, some are a bit lighter. So it's making the face look a bit more interesting. So I'm happy with that. So if we unsolo that, we can see that the face is reasonably lit. In fact, I can turn that light down a little bit now as it's a little bit overlit. but we have some nice darker areas too, clear, more clearly showing that this is a gold material. So that's looking nice. It would be nice to try and get a bit of a highlight on the side of this uh, dial, this, this uh, knurled dial here. So if we get a, let's say this light here, 
and we drop it onto the canvas and then I zoom in to that detail and we move the light with light paint and we click on there and then we can scale that up a bit let's solo that light and see what it's doing so you can actually see that light now is visible in that bezel and we don't really want that uh, we were trying to get a nice detail on, on these knobs in this dial so let's see if I just move this across a bit if we can get it out of the view of the bezel so the lights a bit large okay so that's created quite nice highlights along that edge there so let's just unsolo and see that in the context of the rest of the lighting okay so overall I'm actually really pleased with that so let's actually finish uh, this lighting project by rendering out the final HDRI. So let's go to our uh, V ray demo and we'll do V ray front lighting and then we'll save that and we'll do this at 3000 pixels and we will render that. Okay, so now that is rendered, we can use the connection panel to stop HDR Light Studio. And then we can do the final render of our scene. It's basically using standard V-Ray dome lights with the texture on disk. So this can be rendered on any computer uh, with or without a HDR Light Studio license. And that's it. So thank you for watching how to light this front view of a watch using HDR Light Studio with Cinema 4D and V-Ray. You can download this scene and have a go yourself. So have fun trying the software. Thanks for watching. Bye.